Okay, hey guys, uh, this is Daniel with uh, D Domain back, and this time I have a guest, uh, ZD Rocker from the Disconnect Disconnected Cast, correct? That is correct. That's uh, that's where I'm from. That's me. And where can they find you? Oh, you can find me. Oh man, this sounds. I feel like I'm entering my podcast now. <laughs> you can find me on all the social media at CD Rocker and all the places, SlimationEntertainment.com and DisconnectedCast.com, the main one. So we'll throw down um, your stuff in uh, in the comment section for YouTube. I and do you have a that. Twitch by any chance or no? I do uh, Slimation streams, but I haven't done it in a while, mostly because I have. I, d I don't have it set up all the time, so then I have to get off my ass and hook everything up, and I just can't be bothered. Oh, yeah. I, need, I need to get like a switch or something, or just make it so it's more convenient, but like I'm going to get back into it, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm yeah, hoping to. Yeah. I, I, use the, I use the Hoppodge right now, so I basically just have to run everything, like, you know, run whatever through. It's really not that much effort. I'm just, I'm just lazy. Um, <laughs> I have... I like running the interface and everything. I just don't like using the onboard streaming on the Xbox or the PlayStation. They work fine. I but think they're awful, so, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks so basic bitch, though. I, I like having my overlay and everything and just being, you know. I've seen, like, some, it... uh, some, some of our streamer friends used to stream mm -hmm. off of just uh, Xbox. And whenever things got into action, you couldn't, like, even tell what's going on. Because it oh, okay. would be so, so pixelated. It's bad then. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, I guess I, I would only, I, since I don't like to watch people that do that, sorry, everybody that does that, uh, uh, it's because of that, I guess I just didn't really see that happen. But I can believe it for sure, especially if it's just the onboard shit card from the last gen, especially. It's weird yeah. calling it last gen, but that's last gen now. It's Yeah, <laughs> it's a strange swap. Like, I have to get used to it. And, you know, anyone who's trying to get current gen, you know, it's hard to get one. So, <laughs> everyone's yeah. stuck on last gen. Yeah, so I had a few friends that were trying very hard, and I told them, you're being crazy. You're really stressing yourself out and freaking out about this for no reason. Um, and I told them, that, yeah, you know, it's just not worth it right now. It's what I've been saying on the podcast. And, you know, a lot of people are probably being like, oh, you're just trying to sound like you, you know, you're not getting FOMO. And you're, you know, I'm like, there's really no reason right now. Unless you give a crap about uh, Demon Souls, which is a fucking, what, like a 12 year old game or some shit from PS3, uh, or you care about um, all the other games you can just play on current gen. Like, to me, there's just no pull right now. Like, every gen does this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not just hating on PS5 and Xbox Series X, but every generation does this. I cannot think of the... Uh, we had a conversation a few episodes ago on our podcast about, like, what had the best launch. And that's being very generous, because best is very exaggerated. Right. Like, so we're trying to think about it. I think I chose, personally, I think I chose the 360, which... A lot of people are going to tell me didn't have a lot at launch, which it didn't. But I think it probably had the best launch that I can think of. Um, yeah. So, so uh, uh, yeah. The, so the main reason I reached out to you was because I wanted to talk about the new console launches. And right off the back, we're getting into it. So that's great. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. I have to agree with you on the 360. Because I remember there being a bunch of games like where I couldn't even play all of the ones or buy all of them because there were so many of them. Like I remember per wanting to play Perfect Dark. Mm -hmm. I remember just wanting to run through a cameo, I think it was called. Correct, yeah, that one. Um, was Viva Pinata launch or was it just early? Because I, I think remember it was, it was just early. early. Okay. Uh, was there a Halo or Gears launch? Game? Mm, I, Halo 3 came out, but I, I know it was still Halo 2, but it was still, I think it was within the first year that it came out. Okay. I remember when uh, the Halo, when 360 came out, we, like, I, I might call it a UTSA. Mm hmm. We um we brought the 360 and then like we played a few games and we just started playing Halo again because <laughs> that's right. what we played over there. Yeah, Play Halo um, Two. Exactly. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna pull up. What was the X? Let me see. Xbox 360 launch games because I know. See here it is. It's in my history because I looked it up. Um, so there were 20 launch games, which is dog shit, but way more than now. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean yeah. I you could look at that. Uh, it was Call of Duty Two, whatever. Uh, Project Gotham Racing Three. That's right. Call of COD Two. That was yep. actually like, that was actually one of the better games. Yeah, like I don't want to shit on that one too much because that was yeah. before COD became <laughs> what it is now. Yeah, blop, COD blops over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, and then Project Gotham Racing Three, which I always forget about because Forza basically just destroyed that series. I um, forgot about that series too. Yeah, Cameo, like you were saying, Perfect Dark Zero, uh, Ridge Racer Six, which again, no one cares anymore because Forza exists. Yeah. Um, Madden 06, okay. A NBA 2K, okay. Now we're getting to kind of like dog shit games uh amp 3 i don't remember i remember i do like i like the what is it like 1080 or whatever there were some sk uh, snowboarding games i did like but amp 3 was uh not one i remember liking um gun that's a launch title that i 
don't know if it was like a PC game originally, but that apparently launched on 360. I still count um, uh, console exclusives though. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. So I liked Gun. Um, then NHL, NBA Live. So two N- NBA games. Obviously, that's great. Uh, Tiger Woods. Okay. Uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, which I remember thinking was all right, but that's really when it started getting away with from the Tony Hawk I care about. Um, Quake Four. That was pretty good. I like that one. Oh yeah, um, Quake Four was good. Uh, Condemned Criminal Origins. That was a spooky game at the time. Oh, oh I forgot um, about that game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was that one. Uh, it got very repetitive because I know a lot of people criticized that, but it was fun otherwise. Uh, King Kong the movie, the game. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, the Need for Speed series, I like a lot of games. I just can't remember if I, that was one of the ones I liked. I forgot. I forget. Um, FIFA 06. DOA 4. Dead or Alive 4, we had a lot of good times with back then. I, I didn't remember. know that was a launch title. I do yeah, remember first playing. Yeah, apparently it was. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember a lot of that. That and we would do Extreme Beach Volleyball <laughs> games after school. <laughs> what a game to play at the end of high school. I don't even get the teacher in trouble or anything, but uh, those were good times. Um, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced. Advanced what? Warfighter, or the first one. Um, that was a then... launch title? According to this list, this could be wow. full of dog shit. I don't know. Um, Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, which is probably that, that's, that's true. Was, that was definitely a launch title, and that was the one I spent one of the most time with. Uh, and then Saints Row, the OG Saints Row, back when it was still trying to be a GTA clone before it just said fuck it and did its own thing and got better than GTA, in my opinion. I, I think, um, yeah, I have a love hate relationship with that game. Yep, and Not, like the, the series. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good. And then Top Spin two. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't do my soundboard. When you introduced me, I was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, uh, there's that. Yeah, I had that on, on the side. But yeah, anyways. that's a pretty good launch, yeah. launch lineup. And then you look Compared at... Compared to now. Yeah, like the oh. Xbox. I've seen two Xbox commercials on YouTube. Granted, I don't mm-hmm. watch a lot of TV, so if there's TV ads, I will never see them. Right. Um, but like one of them shows Master Chief, and then like his helmet t- turns into a planet or something. And it says, their, says their slogan. <laughs> and then one of it shows this dude walking up uh, a building. Uh-huh. And then he gets to the top of the building. And, like, there's this girl hanging off of another building on top, like, facing down. Kind of, like, reverse Spider-Man. Like, that old Mary right. Jane scene. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. then it just says the, its slogan. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> Right. And I think that's the biggest problem that this generation's facing. Is, like, even if you look at PlayStation where they'll just show a montage of a bunch of like games that you can play on the current like ps4 gen. games exactly <laughs> yeah. that's all it really is and um i think jim sterling was talking about it and I, I think he made a very good point uh when his he was doing his facetious ps5 video where he was just being a dick about it but joking about how is that the one where like i got a ps5 game. now so yeah. i don't like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i love that one and uh but he was just talking about it you know some of the actual points he made in that jo- uh, even though he's joking most of the time was uh yeah, there's not really much reason. And he talked, I think he made a standalone Demon Souls video later on. And um, he basically just talked about it. He's just like, it's fine. It looks shinier. I mean, you could see, especially when you play in the modes with higher frame rate, uh, you could see the difference if you have a monitor or TV that could keep up with that. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing, uh, especially now. I feel like later on, they'll probably remedy the situation. But they're doing the thing where they use a lot of uh, asterisk advertising, as I like to call it, which is like, PS5, higher frame rate, higher resolution. Uh, we meant higher frame rate or higher resolution. Because like yeah, yeah. uh, Miles Morales, for example, you have to choose one or the other. You either right, have for... it with HDR, ray tracing, and all this bullshit, but it runs at like a locked 30 or 60 or whatever. I forgot which one, but it's, you know, whatever. Uh, and then, or you can have it be 60 plus, but it's going to take away a lot of the special effects and everything. So it's like... Okay, well, PC is already in a place, I, and it, and I know it's never really fair to compare PC with console because you can get a PC that's way worse than console, or you can get a PC that's way better than console. So it's always a mixed bag to say that. But at that point, um, you know, especially with Black Friday just having come by, you, that's always the best time. I built a PC one time around then, and that was like the time to do it. So I, I think it's interesting that you bring that up about the PC thing, though, comparing it to the console, because I kind of had the same uh, similar feeling with uh, the Xbox side on Gears of War, <laughs> where you, I, I actually do think Gears of War is one of the more op, better optimized games, quote unquote, mm-hmm. because they actually are improving the resolution and improving the frame rate and stuff. I mean, uh, and the graphics, like the textures. I'm sorry, I meant to say right. textures. Like the game actually does look better than just like uh, higher in the frame rate, but. Um, 
all those graphics are pretty much just the graphics that they use in the PC version of the game, which the PC version of the game was beautiful. And, like, I think it's cool that Gears fans are going to be able to play in those graphics, but I kind of see it as, like, I was there two years ago type thing. Right, and that's the thing, exactly. So, you know, there's many people that could argue that a lot of these graphical upgrades, including ray tracing and everything, is just stuff that PC gamers have been ex experiencing for a while now, at least for at least a couple of years now. Um, ray tracing oh, has only been two uh, years. Yeah, two years. Okay, but there's uh, like so, ten games that do it. It's like right, <laughs> including Minecraft. Um, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh, one of the things I was going to say before I forget is uh, this was an off uh, recording conversation that you and I had uh, that I think we both agreed on, where we would even take like 2K resolution and then just have a better frame rate with that because even that can look really sharp. Yeah. Um, so. um, I, I saw a Linus video a few years back, and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a cool video where he has uh, three monitors, and this is what convinced me to get 2K over 4K. Mm -hmm. He has three monitors next to each other, and then he got like three of his friends, and they all played, I believe, Doom on, mm -hmm. in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Mm -hmm. And most of them couldn't tell the difference between the 1440p and the 2, 4K. Granted, this right. is a monitor, so it's a lot smaller than a TV. Yeah, that's definitely. just to show how much of a jump it is. And then it kind of just, um, I guess it's just it's too much for you, like at that point. Right, exactly. And um, it's like, even with when it comes to frame rate, you know, I'm not even like the biggest frame rate snob. I just want a locked 60. I don't even give a shit about this 120 FPS stuff or unlimited FPS, unlocked uh, FPS stuff. Like, just give me, if you can give me 2K lock 60, I will be happy gaming with those that style for a long time. I, I, I got to say, me personally, mm -hmm. I can see the difference between 60 and 120. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I, have, I, have, yeah, I have a uh, 100 monitor right now, and I actually just bought a new one over Black Friday. I, it comes mm -hmm. in tomorrow. Nice. But when I uh, took the jump from 60 to 100, even that, I was like, wow, this is like, it just looks re weird how fast everything looks like it's moving when it's really not moving that fast. Like, it's crazy. For sure. And uh, yeah, I guess it is all just benchmarks to uh, like my uh, like John, uh, one of my co-hosts, like when I was um, showing him, he really didn't pay attention to frame rate before. So in that yeah. episode uh, that him and I, I think it was just him and me in that episode, we had a lot of frame rate conversation. So afterwards, you know, he asked me, you know, I, I felt like he could ask me on this podcast, but he didn't want to I guess he didn't want to seem unknowledgeable or whatever. But um, he asked me, you know, what's this big deal about it? Like, why should I care? So I showed him a video that uh, kind of demonstrated, you know, what does it look like at lock 30, at lock 60? Uh, unfortunately, the uh, screen I was showing him on wasn't going to show him anything higher than 60, so there's no point in that. But even between lock 30 and lock 60, he was like, wow, that's like a big difference. He was like, it's, like, it's so smooth, the movement and everything doesn't look so sluggish or jerky. So if right. there's that difference between 60 and above, then that's always good. More frame rates, always better for sure. I mean, that's definitely, I definitely don't want to sound like I'm being like only 60, but, um, well, I agree yeah. with you too, too, on most better, games higher though. Than lower. Like, mm -hmm. and I guess I play a lot of shooters and right. Right. So right. it's not noticeable with shooters, but when I'm playing a game like Watch Dogs or something like, cause I, you know, I was playing Watch Dogs cause I got it for free. Right, right. That's a very good price to get. Watch Dogs. <laughs> yeah. well, the only price you should pay for Watch Dogs is free, so there's that. So, like, um, I was playing it, and I, I think I was running everything on max, and I was getting around 40 FPS, and that was fine mm -hmm. there because it's not a game that requires, like, a fast movement and stuff while I, right. like a Twitch shooter does. Yeah, it won't even let you move fast, really. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was so, so fucking slow in Watch Dogs. I hate it. So... Yeah, you know, like, I, I agree with you that 60 is, like, probably a good norm to keep to, but there I are some uh, genre of games that do benefit from going beyond it. Oh, for sure. I feel like uh, shooters and fighting games are two that, like, high frame rates definitely. I hadn't even thought about fighting games, but yeah, I could definitely see that, especially yep, since all sure. the timing is down to the frame. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yep, because there's so much frame data that these fucking fighting game nerds study and stuff, and, like, they gotta know between this frame to this frame you can block or you can't block or whatever they got to know all that stuff so exactly so the more open you are there yeah so yeah uh, i think so to clarify my statement i feel 60 especially with today's tech should be the bare minimum like it should never even drop below 60 have it so your game's even at 80 fps so that way when it drops when you get a drop it goes nowhere below 60. yeah i just think that that's how it should be um but yeah that to me would be the norm before we just harp on for that forever because obviously we're both you know 
uh, proponents of high frame rate. But so, um, do you have any of the consoles that like? So I sat out last generation. For anyone who doesn't know, I mm -hmm. built a PC and I've been pretty happy with this. I, I okay. didn't, didn't really get a con I didn't get a console except for the Switch. Mm -hmm. um, but I've heard like the PlayStation Pro and the Xbox One X, like the la last gen, mm -hmm. actually did allow you to uh, change. Uh, in some games, like your uh, your resolution and your textures, like did, right. Did you ever so, experience that? Um, so I don't personally own those, but I did get to experience them uh, with a friend. And um, what I will say is, if you have a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, fuck their naming conventions. Anyways, yeah, the Xbox uh, sucks. <laughs> It really sucks. Like, I'm not even an Xbox hater. In fact, everyone knows on the podcast, I try my damnedest to be fair and try to defend them when everyone's just shitting on them for no reason. But, man, they cannot name a console for shit. But anyways, um, but yeah, if you have an Xbox One X or a uh, PS4 Pro, you have even less incentive to upgrade this generation as it stands right now. Until they start locking games to PS5 only or Xbox Series X only, which, they've, uh, which PlayStation's already said it's going to be at least a year before they start making games only on ps5 i thought they believed so, in generations i know that's what i thought too <laughs> they like to say weird shit like that yeah. like when um i remember when playstation uh, i'll get back on the topic but i just wanted to say real quick i remember when playstation was laughing at xbox for like because everyone was just like whoa xbox one goes backwards compatible with so many games back to the og xbox what about playstation we're gonna go back to ps1 and they're just like we're so busy looking into the future that we're not worried about backwards compatibility and then like months after they made that statement they started reselling ps3 and ps4 games on i mean ps3 and ps2 games on ps4 as remasters which are barely texture upscaled and but they're just reselling them like what happened to looking forward and then you guys drop like 30 last gen games and it's just like that's not looking forward but anyways um yeah with those you do have the option to toggle uh, hdr on and off you uh, there were a lot of options that were unlocked in fact some games menus um i can't remember off the top of my head which one so this is gonna be a very bad explanation but there were even some games uh where they just grayed out they couldn't even bother to remove it if you were just playing on a regular one it just grayed out the oh, wow. uh, HDR or the texture or the resolution. So you could see what you could adjust if you had a Pro or a Xbox One X. But yeah, you have a lot more customization. It was definitely more towards the, um, you know, uh, PC feel than the other consoles. But a lot of people have a love-hate relationship. There's some people that love that iteration and there were other people who were like, they should have just skipped that iteration and just focus on making PS5 and Xbox Series X good. I mean, options are options. I, I mean, I'm always down for different stuff. It's like, you know, you have all digital consoles and then the disc consoles this generation for both systems. I mean, you, you, at least you get your options. Yeah. Uh, personally, not a disc man anymore. I haven't been for since like maybe PS2 and Xbox 360. But yeah, if I got a new console, I'd get a digital PlayStation. Yep. Same here. Just wouldn't be worth it to get a disc version anymore because... All it really is is just an unlock because it just downloads so much data on your hard drive anyway. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that when the PS4 first came out, how you still had to install the whole damn game on there. Yep, it's and like, I'm sure PS5 is no different. And then the weird thing about PS5, I don't know if you heard about that, but they had the the locked data fiasco, like the locked memory. They always have that every generation, but this generation is absolutely ridiculous. Is that where, like, like uh, the more you use it, like the more memory, like actually so, gets like corrupted, I guess, in a sense. And the only way to get so, it back is by like a... Uh, that was PS4 for out. sure. Okay. Yeah, you'd have you'd have to do a full format to get it all back. Okay. Um, that's PS4 for sure. This generation, um, PlayStation, of the terabyte hard drive which i think should be just at this point their terabyte ssds they should be standard now because ssd versus regular hard drive right. night and day. i mean you can get a really fast revving hard drive but that's a whole nother conversation anyways um but yeah of that terabyte only 625 gigs is usable i believe the playstation is actually 825 Oh, 8, 825? I, uh, I think it was 825, but now they have an other that took out another 100. Oh, okay. Um, or whatever. Yeah, because they have systems. and Yeah, so that was the... Uh, that's what's advertised on the box is 8-something. Right. It right, says right, 1 right. terabyte, 8 something use. But when people... At, when you actually fire that up and you look in system settings, it's only, it's only 625. Uh, because there's another on top of system. Wow. There's also something called other that takes away another hundred plus. So, oh, okay. So, so that's like a Call of Duty and two other games. Yes, correct. <laughs> I mean, crazy. and they've already said these games, especially when they start hitting a lot of these fancy HDR 
uh, ray tracing, uh, 8K crap that they're trying to hit as a benchmark uh, eventually during this generation. They said the games are going to start getting ridiculously big. They said, eight, you think eight, you're think you crying about 80 gig games now? Like people are just being like, Cyberpunk's going to be a 70 gig game plus a, a 40 gig patch. And I'm just like, dude, it's going to get way worse from here on out. You're going to really have huge games at this point, especially yeah. open world stuff. So when I bought my graphics card, I was able to get one of the new uh, 30 series graphics card. Mm -hmm. It came with uh, Black Ops, the new one. Mm -hmm. That download for everything is uh, 156. Yeah, see? And so that just puts the other ones I was saying. It, yeah. it, already, eclipses, it already eclipses those, and it's not even the biggest game that's going to be coming out this generation. Um, but, yeah, it's just weird. I, I feel like... Um, it's, I'm very interested to see, you know, they have a lot of potential, these consoles. I just want to see how long it's going to take for everyone to start utilizing it. We always see this every generation where the best looking, best performing games, and it's just the nature of the beast, but I just think if they really tried harder, you could get it out quicker because obviously these consoles can do it, is mm -hmm. the end of life games always look the best. I remember Chaos Theory, I still cannot believe Chaos Theory is an OG Xbox game. so good. It looks incredible. I can't day. believe it's an OG Xbox game. Yeah, absolutely. Even yeah. by today's standards, it looks awesome. I replayed it a few uh, years back, like maybe like three years back, and it still so looks good. good. Uh, why, 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 the, why does Ubisoft suck and not want to make good games like Splinter Cell? Yet we get an Assassin's Creed every fucking six months. They, they fucking even like throw Sam Fisher at different things. Like he's been in yeah, both Ghost Recon. The, <laughs> yeah. like the phone he, game. Yeah. yeah, he's a skin in, in <laughs> shit, or he's a he's got a cameo. Oh, he's in Rainbow know. Six now. He's actually he's an operator now. Like what there the you fuck? go. That's what it's called, operator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I hate that shit. Even Lara Croft's an operator. It's like why? Uh, but yeah, so really, I didn't know that. That's fucking yeah. Crazy. No, Laura Croft is an operator too. It's so dumb. Um, I love Laura Croft. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Tomb Raider. Oh yeah, but that's not her. But name. it's like why? It's like yeah. why? <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. I that's the worst cock tease. It's like, oh, uh, Castlevania. We're doing a and everyone was like, uh, because it was Symphony of the Night teaser. Oh, and everyone I was just like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and everyone was like, holy shit, Switch port. It's gonna be awesome. Then we'll have more Castlevania games on Switch on android and ios and it was just like what the fuck like what the fuck like konami it's like you don't even know what you're doing like it's like they have to be a troll at this point or silent hill of course silent hill's never gonna get another fucking game yet they have a dead by daylight level yeah the pyramid head yeah he's in there i was watching which play. they they did a great job there's like canonical stuff that they even inserted in there and there's a lot of easter eggs for silent hill fans to freak out about but give us another silent hill game it's like all this cameo shit's just cock teasing and it's not even like again it's it's fine i guess but that would be fine if i knew another game was coming it's right like, but it's, that's like, all they're doing it's, it's a good tease, tease if it led up to something yep exactly like if, if it was an actual tease and not like the end of the, <laughs> the yeah content. that's it yeah. that's the only that's the only splinter cell and uh the only uh silent hill content you're getting for the next years it's just like great yeah but, yeah yeah and i i have to agree with what you're saying about the new consoles like the playstation you get I guess Miles Morales, no, Miles Morales is on the previous one, right? Correct, yep, it's on both. Yeah, so it's only Demon Souls and I don't even remember the other one. Oh, I, Godfall, I, right? Yes, Godfall, there you <laughs> go. That was the other one I couldn't remember. That's how memorable that game was. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, not not Destiny is the other game aside yeah. from Miles Morales. And I just think of Destiny every time I see Godfall. I don't know why. I see it and I, I think, think of oh, Anthem. Oh, of Osiris or Anthem, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe Anthem. Like a Melee Anthem, Anthem. yeah. yeah. With all this money they're wasting on Anthem, EA could be making... The next Dragon Age is going to be shit. I don't know why everyone's... And I know why. It's because all the people who don't really keep up with all this stuff don't understand. But everyone's freaking out that Dragon Age is going to have like a teaser, another video soon. But Dragon Age is going to be shit because look at Anthem and then look what they did to fucking Mass Effect. Like they, they messed both of those games up. So I'm really not hyped at all for Dragon Age because it's just going to be another either half the game's going to be gutted out as DLC like always or it's just not going to be good at all. It's kind of funny because I have the kind of the same sentiment about Halo mm -hmm. uh, Infinite. Like I'm actually kind of hyped for Halo Infinite, but I mm -hmm. I know that there's no reason I should be. <laughs> right, right. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Like I got you there. I've seen you know I, I, when I saw the trailer, mm -hmm. and I guess this is um, me attacking Xbox now. Um, Go for it. <laughs> like I thought it looked kind of cool because they're going back to OG Halo, and um, right. But then I think about it, like my favorite Halo games are all a bungee mm -hmm. Halo. I don't know. Have you played Halo Four or Halo Five? I didn't care for them. Like I, I played them for. I, I own both of them. Uh, to be okay. clear, but I played them for like hours each, and then just stopped because I just I didn't care. So I played Halo Four. 
I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I tried playing it a lot more than I should have. It was a fucking awful game. I shouldn't yeah. have played that much. It was fucking Call of Duty, mm-hmm. if like in a Halo skin. It was stupid. Right. They they ruined the gameplay. They ruined what made Halo Halo. I never play Halo Five because I, I never had a last gen console. I do plan on playing it before Infinite comes out just to mm-hmm. play everything. And now with uh, it being on the it's cloud, on PC, right? Oh okay, no, no, yeah. it's not on PC. That's the one no? they will oh, port okay. over X- because everyone X Cloud because sh- everyone shit on that so much that they're not going to yeah. port over. <laughs> so you know, like cloud time. and they thought they did something great with fucking Halo Five. And they, remember, yeah, this is three four three. So then they added loot boxes. <laughs> yeah, which and, is dog shit. And you, those loot boxes actually gave you gameplay in certain modes. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking exactly. so stupid. That's so bad. But even outside of that, like the, mm-hmm. the game itself just strayed away from the from what Halo was, um, and they thought they were doing a good job. I've been reading a lot of things about Halo Infinite, and apparently one of the, uh, the rumors going around is that Halo Infinite was actually redone from the ground up sh- shortly like into its development cycle. Because mm-hmm. they were pretty much making it like a Halo Five Two, for like a better term, right? But right. since they got shit on so badly, yeah, they're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So Start like, over. these people thought that the worst fucking Halo game was like one of the best ones ever. I like, don't understand how jaded some of these devs can be sometimes. So like, that's why I don't really give them like so much. Like, why am I excited about something they're gonna produce when every single Halo game they've produced? So like far, has, has been bad. shitty. The best thing they've done so far is re-release the old fucking games, and even that came out broken as shit. Right? Yeah, it, like, it's weird that um, yeah. So you have what? Are they, what is it? Three four three? Is that yeah three four three? Yeah. So you have three four three studios who just picked up the mantle from Bungie and just started fucking that up, and then you have uh, Bungie who went to do their own thing and then fucked up their own thing. <laughs> I heard Activision had a lot to do with it. Not that Bungie's yeah. off the hook because they fucking well, signed yeah. with Activision. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, because then they got rid of Activision and then fucked up the second game. But um, no, Activision's yeah. involved in the second game. Oh, were they involved in that also? Okay, okay. Because I was going to say that was just as bad. It's until like a year ago, that a uh, year or two ago. So like they finally got it. Like so, like the new when they went free to play is when Activision has nothing to do with it anymore. Oh, okay, fair, fair. I guess it was, the damage was too deep at that point. I really wanted to like Destiny, but I don't know. It was just the content gets there way too late. Like the first game, I just was obsessed when it first came out. I played that game way too much. I was getting like three hours of sleep a day before work and doing. Oh wow, yeah, it's hardcore. Like, yeah, I was like really yeah. into it, and then I was just like, this game is really there's nothing to it. It's, I'm just doing the same dumb boss fight over and over again to get resources, and then um, I just gave up. I skipped the two expansions. Then Taken King came out, and I said, holy shit, this looks good. So I got back in, and Taken King was a lot of fun, and I was just like, see. If this was the game, what the game was off the bat, and then they expanded from there, that would be really good. Then there's a lot of debate on the 10-year plan. Did they really mean 10-year of one game, 10-year of multiple games? Right. Or whatever the fuck. But if you look at the original statement, the way I read that is 10 years of one game. They were trying to do a World of Warcraft type thing where it was supposed to be this one game supported for a decade. But... So I don't know what the original plan was, but I know there was a leaked plan that <laughs> obviously didn't happen because we only got two games out of it. <laughs> that was the first game would take... Um... I think three years to develop and then after that they were doing a a game on a two-year cycle mm-hmm. but after the first like after in the second year like i guess the off year they mm-hmm. released like a big expansion which would be like tank of king for um the first one for the second one would be forsaken you know something mm-hmm. that's sizable and expensive right right basically another game yeah I think those were like 40 50 bucks exactly and i never played the first one but everyone tells me taking king is when the game actually became good Yep, which is uh, like over a year into the life, so that tells a lot of that's like a year of boringness before it finally picked it up. That's just and it's just like and it's like they're so blind because the the things that people like about that game is fairly gracing for people like me who aren't even the biggest shooter fans. We, so we like to do the side stuff, you know, to keep busy. Yeah. And then you have the, the hardcore shooter mode, which is Trials of Osiris. Um, Sparrow, League, uh, Sparrow Racing League was like never seen again. They keep teasing it and saying, oh, yeah, we'll eventually bring it back. And then they don't. And then Trials, they just keep canceling. That was our joke on the last podcast. They just like canceled it again. They were just like, oh, big Trials coming up this weekend, coming back. And then that's like the several time already that they've done that. Um, I don't know. It's still better than becoming just an advertisement like the last Gears of War that had like a Terminator collab, a WWE collab, <laughs> two, two yeah. WWE collabs. And I'm just like, I like Gears, but what the fuck is even happening anymore? Like, they, they're not even like trying to mask the advertising in it. It was just like Terminator Dark Fate, seed in theaters. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why? 
it's so bad. But um, I just don't like to see games go there. But at the same time, it's not really getting much out of this. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of an example of a game where I shouldn't be hyped about it, but I, uh, but I was. But I, I can't think right now. You, you hyped but, about Cyberpunk? <laughs> oh, there you go. There's a game that's going to probably disappoint me. We'll see. Preloads tomorrow for PS4, so I'm probably going to figure that out. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll be fair about it. I'm hyped, yeah. but not that hyped. I, I, I got the game. I saw it on Best Buy for like, you get $10 reward credit back. And I'm going oh, to get like a new microphone anyway, so I'll just buy it from them. Um, kind of getting it for the content. I myself, not really like, I don't know. I think it looks cool. I, I don't I don't buy the hype though. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing that'll be interesting to see. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a very uh, disjointed reaction. I feel like critically, it's going to get a bunch of acclaim, but then the fans oh, IGN already gave it a nine. Like, but, yeah, there you, know, you go. So, how much? So there you however, go. I ever, I ever, nah, average of money do they give them? I don't trust anything. They right. Come but yeah, but IGN <laughs> did give a Pokemon game a low score because it had too much water. So you just never know. <laughs> you never know anymore. I remember that show was so fucking funny. That was their big criticism. They had no criticism, so their thing was this Pokemon game had too much water. Like, what the hell is that? Like, I don't know. They lost me uh, forever when they uh, gave Halo Four like a nine something, <laughs> and they <laughs> so bad. What the hell is that score? They like in the pros. They said like. It was a Halo for Halo lovers because everyone, you know, was wondering what three four three is gonna do with it, and it was fucking a different game than Halo. So I'm like, fuck you guys. It's all add like money you said, to you. COD with a Halo skin. I think that's the most accurate way to ex- describe it. It really was. Like it was fucking ridiculous. And then that's the same thing <laughs> happened to Judgment, uh, Gears Judgment. Oh my god, yeah. I forget. I'm trying to forget that game happened. <laughs> Shit was awful. Yeah, it was so bad. God damn it. And those how were my two franchises you... back in the day, so... How, how dare you do our boys dirty with <laughs> that stupid game? I wanted to be hyped about it, but it turned out so bad. Yeah. Um, even, like, uh, Gears, you know, I know you used to love Gears, too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Used Horde mode, them. we used to play Horde mode a lot together. Yep, that was fun. And Now Horde our... mode fucking sucks, because they're a level-up system. Exactly. Remember when our friend ran into the ditch and just got killed? Because yeah. He was <laughs> That was so stupid. I think about those moments sometimes, and I'm just like, what is that? I'm going to rush in, guys. Why? <laughs> Why? What are you doing? Oh, you're dead? Oh, okay, well, we're not going to save you. See him get curb stomped on the video. And I'm just like, okay, see you later, dude. <laughs> Horde mode, especially when we would start playing it on hard and stuff like that, you absolutely need to be coordinated. You cannot be running gun solo <laughs> Rambo style, like, in the middle of the thing, because those guys will kill you. I, I, I loved playing it with all, you know, our group. Yeah, with the group. Yeah, that's that was so a lot great. Of fun. Um, another reason I wish there had been more Splinter Cells because that that the multiplayer we played with those games were fun. They may not have been perfect, but the... I love the Splinter Cell multiplayer. I think it's some some of the best multiplayer of all time. It was it asymmetric was, especially... but like somewhat balanced. You remember which game was it that had the spies versus mercs? Uh, Pandora's box, uh, Pandora's box, Pandora's tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that that game. Uh, that shit was so funny though. When you be the spy, hey idiot. Yeah, that was so fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good idea. Why? Why not? Well, I know why a lot of games try to avoid mics now because everyone's apparently a racist or weird. Uh, but um. That's why a lot of games are just using ping modes and everything because no one wants to hear yeah. children on, on, on the game. <laughs> you know, I don't know why I did an impression of our other friend. Our good uh, But yeah, there's that. Well, I, I think like back then, <laughs> voice was actually a lot a bigger thing than it is now because now we have the Discord. Yeah. Like, so right, everyone's true. in Discord and not even in-game chat. That's well, true too. Well, back then, game chat was only in-game. So, like, all those, um, I guess, items where you can hack the other people's chat, which were cool as shit. Yeah, that's awesome. And they didn't, even know, that, they didn't even know that they were hacked. Like, yeah. You can't do that shit anymore because yeah. everyone was in Discord. Dude, they're behind us. What? That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. Yeah, exactly. Like, mechanics like that don't get to be a thing anymore because, exactly, because who the fuck uses in-game chat anymore? I think it's yeah. funny that a lot of games even have it. It's just like... Use here to use in-game chat. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna leave Discord to use that dog shit version. Even when I'm playing with people game. like, like that I know, we're still using this. Like, and we're all in the group in the game. We're still using Discord. Right. Which, by the way, I you know I'm sure this is a financial deal thing. Uh, PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X, get Discord on your fucking systems. Like, have it already. Like, because. 
that would be so awesome to just have Discord completely integrated yeah. in this console generation also, because why else not? Oh, because you want us to use the PlayStation chat that sucks or the Xbox chat that's no good? I don't know. It's just really bad. Yeah, Especially part of that, with last gen. Like, I know they're trying to integrate Xbox Live into PC, and they're actually <laughs> doing a decent job, in my opinion. But the party chat on it, like, when you're trying to talk with people from Xbox, it fucking sucks. It's just, everyone join Discord. <laughs> yep. Everyone just do that. It's free, goddammit. I mean, I pay, but still. That's why I got my cool legacy badge. But still, 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 you should always use Discord. Yeah. Um. It's not even the first iteration. What was that other one people used to use all the time? Um. There was another very popular Zello? one. Zello? I'm going to ruin that. Was it that? No. Uh, well, that was one of the things that people tried to use. Uh, game chat app. It's just going to tell me these Discord. I remember there being one that, like you had to pay for the server yourself. Oh God. Yeah, I would believe that. Uh, ooh, there's a lot of them apparently. Well, you know, Discord's listed as number one for a reason. Well, whatever. There's a whatever it was. There was another one that people would always try to have me use, and I just couldn't get into that one either. Somehow Discord just pulled it off just right. I don't know what it is. It's not really um, functionally different than a lot of other game chat things, but it's just so good. Yeah. Team speak. Team speak. Oh, I remember team speak. Yeah, that was a while. Yeah, one. yeah. People tried to make us use that also, and then there was the dark days of using Skype. The to... I think Team speak required a um, a server. Yeah, it did. Um, it that yeah, that one did. Yeah, you'd have to. I remember because it was such a pain in the ass setting one up before. But yeah. Yeah, I this remember. This basically does one. all the background work for you. That's what made that so good. Because when you make your own servers and stuff like that, it's pretty much all ready to go. You can set up bots and. Everything. And they host themselves. Like yeah. I remember Teamspeak. I bought a server for Teamspeak for uh, Battlefield. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah, um, we never used it because it was a pain in the ass. Even though I paid. For what it. do you think about Battlefield lately? Uh, the last few titles. Like, what was the? Do you still like them? And or if not, what did you think was the last good? One? My last Battlefield that I played was four. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, okay, so like it's been a while. I actually have. I'm disappointed they haven't released one because for the last like year, year and a half, or maybe a year, like. I've been wanting to play one. After Battlefield 1, I was like, if they do a modern one, and like the next numbered one, I guess, like 6, mm -hmm. I want to play. Like, I don't I don't know what it's about. I don't know anything about it, but I want to play it because I, I missed games like that. I guess I'm just getting deprived mm -hmm. with all the shit games that have come out. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. But I don't, I remember the 6. Was that the one with the women, or was that... I don't, I don't remember. I remember that being that marketing debacle where EA said, like, don't buy our game, and then people that buy their game, they're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Yeah, that's really weird. Uh, I, I don't remember. I just remember loving Bad Company. My Bad Company so, so long ago. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. But it was so freaking good. Even Bad Company 2 was okay, but it wasn't as good as the first one. I just love the silliness of it. Like, you were a band was a of game. very idiots. It was good stuff. Um, I like the yeah. idea as a battlefield. I just think shooters were saturated at the time. And now there's. Yeah. I don't think there's like... All shooters are still saturated. They they're still all like shitty, like in my opinion. Like, they're all battle royales. There's no yeah. Well, that's the thing exactly. Yeah. That's uh, that's the main thing is everyone just tries to be Fortnite now. Like uh, Call of Duty did it, even though PUBG is the original. Even they started altering their stuff to be more like Fortnite, even though they're the ones who technically set the bar. Um, Fucking Cliffy B, who like talks shit about them. Like a year later, he has one. Yeah, and then and then uh, yeah, he, a year later he has one, and then months later it's dead. Yeah, like, like his lawbreakers <laughs> sucked. Um, I don't know. It's just weird because. There's two Fallout. camps. You have that, exactly. Uh, you have that, and then you have the other camp where you still have the people that are trying to copy Overwatch. Um, because you have Valorant, which is basically just Overwatch and CS. But that's the only one that I can think of right now. I wanted to get into, but yeah. No, yeah, no, that's true. That's technically only the other one. That's why that's the only other camp, basically. Because you have all, you have those two, Overwatch and Valorant, that are in their own world, and then you have everything else. That's just yeah, I, I was Fortnite. playing Overwatch the other day for the first time in a long time. Oh, uh, Apex Legends is like uh, Overwatch also. It's um, it's a I guess it's a hero BR. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I guess, I guess, you're talking about heroes. I guess it's, it's you know what? Yeah, no, that's true though. It is more a battle royale still. I don't know. It's I guess it's a mix of both. So that one's the middle ground. You have Apex. It's the. Middle I see what you're ground. saying though. They're going more towards like instead of everyone being the same, characters Powers. having special abilities. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. Yeah, but you're right, though. When it comes to objectives, it technically... Yeah, so it's like Overwatch with a BR. <laughs> yeah. So so when Overwatch 2 comes out, if that shit has a Battle Royale mode, it's just going to be trying to be Apex <laughs> Legends. So it's just going to get full circle. But uh, yeah, uh, I shooters, just not my thing right now. I tried to play Battlefield 1, even though I think it's funny how when they do shit like that, it's like Madden... What is it? Madden 20, which they did a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Or Madden 22 or whatever the fuck, and then now they're going to have to think of what they call the next Madden game. 
Um, and then you have that with Battlefield, which is like, it's the however many Battlefield game, but it's Battlefield 1, because World War 1, obviously, but still, it's like, why did you do that to your thing? I couldn't get into Battlefield 1 only because using the old guns and shit, they're trying to be all like, bolt action, I'm like, no, fuck off, like, I'm trying to use, like, something with a huge-ass clip and, like, just spray it into people, but, um, don't take that out of context, saying spray into people probably sounded <laughs> really weird, but yeah, <laughs> there's that. I've always had that uh, issue with, um, old shooters, too. It's not that I don't like them. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Wolfenstein is one of my favorite shooters. Of all time. Return yeah, to Wolfenstein, yeah. specifically. But, like, there's definitely a different feel or a different rhythm to old games and, or old shooters and new shooters. Because new yeah. shooters, everything's fucking automatic, so you just run out and gun everyone. The yep. old one, you have to, like, hide, hide by a wall so when you shoot and you're reloading, you have to, like, <laughs> you can get behind. Yeah, and, you know, it's really sad, uh, old versus new, is that the old franchises are still there. They just became bad. <laughs> they yeah. just became new and bad. <laughs> That's what happened. They didn't go away. It's not a generational replacement. It's just they try to be with the cool kids. It's just the boomer with the skateboard trying to be cool. I guess that's kind of why I'm looking forward to Battlefield a little bit because I kind of want something that's more reminiscent of older shooters because I feel like everything nowadays is just like, especially Call of Duty. Call of Duty is still one of the biggest shooters out there because like Absolutely. they try to make it, I don't want to say idiot proof, but they kind of throw random, some sort of random aspects in the game. So mm -hmm. even a person that sucks ass can feel like they're doing something, even when they right. end up going three and twenty. At mm -hmm. least they spawn behind one of the guys and got to shoot them. And just get and lucky, yeah. yeah. You just knife them and they're gone. Uh, yeah. And I, I can't wait. Oh, go ahead. What's up? I was gonna say like that. I, I see my. I feel. I feel like games are trying to become more accessible, more than yes. challenging. So Absolutely. They're, yeah. they're willing to get rid of any sort of skill at the at the cost of, like, you know, at the, I guess the gain. It's costing skill. They're gaining dollars because they want exactly. to sell all this shit. So. And that's what it really is. And it's why you don't see too many games head to, like, there's not a real... Com the competitive scene salts the same shit still. It's still StarCraft. It's still League of Legends. You still have a couple of shooters that are up there, but... A lot of games don't break into the competitive market because that's all they go for. All they want is everyone to buy it. They don't need to worry about having a good balance. Exactly. They don't try to try to make it skill based or anything. They they've already given up on that because they just realized, well, we can make millions of dollars though. No one's gonna play MLG this, but you know everyone's gonna buy it though. Well, so screw it. Know, like oh, I, I was gonna say the number one game, but the number one game is actually League, which is very competitive. Mm -hmm. But like the the most popular games, I guess, in culture is like Fortnite. Mm -hmm. And yep, Apex absolutely. and all that stuff. All those are not hear about un Fortnite. unbalanced games because you can you can land next to something that's just fucking godlike and it's over from the beginning because you can kill everyone. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, for anyone who thinks that I just didn't even, I just want to hate it because, and I mean, and everyone should to be honest. But I did try Fortnite several times. I really did try because I just wanted to be objective and say. What is it? Like, what is the appeal so much? Because not to mention they changed it big time from what it originally yeah. was to Same. what it is now. Right. Um, which is basically just Minecraft plus Zombies. shooter. But, <laughs> yeah. But, there, but again, yeah, there are those random aspects where, like, I'll be trying to kill someone and I got a shot lined up and then someone just builds a wall in front of me and I'm just like, you piece of shit, like... Why the I fuck would a wall the just be... yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like, why the fuck would a wall just appear in front of me? I obviously had a clear shot, like, and, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just weird. I mean, I, I'm also not good at shooters to begin with, but I, I played Fortnite. Like I remember, I was actually excited about Fortnite, um, mm -hmm. the 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 battle royale version when it right. was called Fortnite Battle Royale and not just Fortnite. Mm -hmm. And Fortnite Save the World was called Fortnite. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> yeah. I know they're just shifting the names around because it because <laughs> it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, me, uh, Matt, and Matt for you guys who don't know is the guy who I stream a lot with. We actually had uh, Save the World, and then Battle Royale came out in beta. But to play the beta version, you had to uh, buy a certain level of uh, Save the World. Right. So I actually played it in beta before it blew up, b before it was a cool thing to hate. And I fucking hated it then. I bought into it right. thinking I was yeah. going to like it, yeah. and I fucking hated it. <laughs> yep. And then for me, it was one of those things where the damage had already been done in terms of, like, I've already heard all the stuff about it that I probably wasn't going to like, but rather yeah. than just, you know, it's like when I, it's like when I watch a movie that I know I'm just not going to like, just so I can say, fuck this movie. Um, same thing with Fortnite. I was just like, I don't know, maybe, maybe this will be my cringe guilty pleasure, but didn't work for me. Bring yeah. Viva Pinata back. That's what needs to <laughs> Oh, that'd be generation. awesome, dude. Day <laughs> <Daniel> one <laughs> purchase. Fucking. 
Two hundred fifty dollar. I'm gonna get the two hundred fifty dollar Horstachio statue. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's sad if they bring back even pinata. They're gonna try to bring it back as a battle royale. <laughs> you pick different pinatas. <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get different pinata skins and and Fortnite dances. I mean pinata dances. That's it. You're gonna pay a lot of money for that. They'll have a Pokemane horse and a fucking <laughs> shroud. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty much exactly. <laughs> God, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't. It's cringy, but man, it's crazy how much some of those, those. Uh, I don't even know. Pokemon's technically just an influencer. She's not even really a player per se. Yeah, she just uh, talks. But, but <laughs> she, yeah, she just talks and simp baits everybody. But um, with uh, Shroud and and Ninja and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, you guys play a cringy game. But when I see those zeros on your check, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, and. <laughs> I want to play a cringy game and get paid millions of dollars. And Shroud, you know, he's very influential, obviously. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know? and he's got he, his Logitech line out now. He was talking shit about Halo the other day, and I was like... Because yeah. he was playing uh, Master Chief Collection, mm -hmm. and he said he didn't like it because the game's not um, chaotic enough. It's not Fortnite. <laughs> the game uh, that, you know, four, a t four team, uh, four player team can control the map, mm -hmm. and the maps mm -hmm. are small. Like, like you're just... You're just saying I don't like everything like the game is pretty much. Like, right, yeah, like right. that the, the game was map control. The game was the like it's actually like a skilled game. It's not sporadic because your skill is what wins, not a fucking random like not getting lucky. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, exactly. and that's a thing. Yeah, I, I it's always weird. And I think this is what makes me drives me to do uh, what I do so much in terms of first impressions or reviews and stuff like that is that I really do try to be objective. I always try to explain my points. I always find it funny when someone tries to argue with me and they just go, well, you're wrong. And I go, okay, counter argument, please, because I kind of spilled out my heart and told you everything why I think this. Yeah. Uh, you can disagree with me, but you at least tell me what why I'm wrong. Oh, uh, whatever, you're just wrong. I'm just like, this is why the internet sucks when it comes to responses. But anyways, yeah, that's the funny thing, too, is just like, that'd be like me playing Call of Duty and then giving a bad review. Like, this game had guns. I really didn't like it. Yeah. It, had guns and white, it had guns and white people. I just didn't really like that. Well, I just think that shows the trend of where thing, uh, the games, I guess, shooters in general, because mm -hmm. that's kind of what, you know, this point, too, is that um, people don't really want a competitive scene anymore. Like, an actual right. competitive scene. They want something that, like, that's everyone can win or eventually you're eventually going to be number one because you might right unlike skill-based stuff if you're trash you're going to be trash forever <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless, you get, unless, unless you get good unless you actually learn how to get good at the game uh you are going to just suffer repeatedly. Yeah. you're not going to just like, get lucky and then win a win a round of whatever but yeah and i guess that's like what i'm going through in my end and why i haven't been playing a lot of shooters in general because I, I was thinking about the other day like my favorite modes were always capture the flag assault like some sort of objective where not only do you have to outshoot your opponent, you have to outthink them. Right. So, and that's just not a thing anymore. <laughs> nope. That's been long gone. And, and it's kind of interesting to just see, sadly, just what the scene becomes. Because as we get older and then we eventually die, there's going to be another generation of people playing games. And what appeals to them is obviously going to be quite different. And uh, I think one very, very noticeable thing is one of my friends had never played final fantasy 7 before and he played remake okay and I, told him, I said you can now no longer play the original one ever again i told him i would like you to because that way a you can just finish the story instead of waiting another 30 years for that game to get complete but um it's also that way you can appreciate kind of just how it's become a little easier uh and i'm not trying to shit on remake i like the remake but I mean, the action combat system is way easier than original turn-based JRPG stuff. That shit's really, really tedious and, and can be really right. tough. I, I honestly uh, don't really consider them, like... I know it's called Remake. I don't consider right. it... A, obviously, it's not a remake. Well, it is a it's remake a, in a sense, but, like, not... I consider it a yeah. different game, just in the same universe, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a it's a retake, essentially. Exactly, that's, that's the best way to put it is. It's a modern retake yeah. of what yep. it used to be, and it is kind of... Like uh, I've I've been hearing that JRPGs like traditional turn basers like aren't really doing no oh, yeah, anymore exactly and that's actually where I was going to go with that is with the exception of Japan um, which just has a different metric all around like yeah the, the Vita did good in Japan but tanked everywhere else and um, handheld gaming is like the number one style still like so the Switch is just killing it in Japan right. and Switch is obviously doing good worldwide but compared to Japan 
they are so their culture there how they're always on the go working like six hour work uh, uh, six day work weeks six hour work weeks jesus <laughs> i wish six day work weeks and stuff like that uh it's just a different cultural thing you know we have a lot more time to sit on our asses here and play on the computer or on console so we see that thrive here better um but with jrpgs other than japan yeah jrpgs just don't do that well everywhere uh anymore which is why i'm curious because yakuza like a dragon which is what i've been playing lately uh one of my favorite series but this uh this um particular entry they went with jrpg instead of the usual combat uh fighting combat system uh i guess action combat system well it has combos whatever it's fighting um but they changed it up. And even in Japan, where it's called Yakuza 7, like a dragon, because it was seen as so different, the marketing team said, well, we're just going to call it Yakuza like a dragon everywhere else because people might not see this as the true seventh game in the series. So um, they switched it and it's just called Yakuza like a dragon everywhere else except for Japan. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to see that. And uh, I, I don't know sales-wise where uh, Like a Dragon's sitting at, but I'm basically my point is I'm gonna, I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't as high as the other entries because the combat system just can't change completely. Right. So, yeah, and JRPGs, yeah, unfortunately, they just don't do as well anymore. And I'm not going to lie, when I go back and I play some, like when I replayed FF7 before Remake came out just to, you know, experience it once again because I do like that game, Yeah. I was just like, holy shit, God damn it! I'm so tired of this. Uh, yeah, I have to grind and... I have to do all this stuff because if I do not hit a certain level or if I do not hit this hard when I get to this boss, the game will literally become unplayable or unbeatable. Um, and uh, yeah, I just won't I just won't randomly spawn behind the boss and build a wall and stab him with a knife, unfortunately, because that's not how I think yeah. we, like well, we just get used to more convenient things. Like I guess as it's as things are becoming more accessible, we kind of like get used to the convenience of what's coming along with it. Like I remember before Halo you know, uh, fucking rechargeable health, like, you know, and shields, but everyone does it now. Call of Duty just is magic. Um, right. You, you know, you, you stay behind a wall and you get health back. Like, that wasn't a thing back in the day. You If you mm -hmm. get fucked up at the beginning of the level, then you have, like, two health for the rest of the level or whatever. Yep, and that'll be it. Yeah, and you're just going to be stuck with that. Yeah, and nowadays, like, I feel like I, pl I play more aggressively because I know I, my health is going to regen. And when I play a game that is, like, doesn't have regenerating health, I'm kind of at a disadvantage at this point because I've lost that kind of mentality to play more conservatively. And you know, I, the, more I, 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 the more I listen to us, I already realized that because, and this, this is going to be the most boomer statement at all, <laughs> I just thinking of how we're going to sound to people who didn't experience, because, you know, the younger people now, they can look at both. Yeah. But, where we, but where we came from, where we saw this develop as it goes, we didn't know that the game's style or industry was going to go in the direction that it has. And so we can really be like, well, literally, back in my day, like that kind of conversation. And yeah. it just really is back in my day. And they won't be able to understand because they get to look at it retrospectively where we're looking at this as it went the whole time. Um yeah, I had oh, a yeah, conversation, really kind of, well, not really a conversation, but I was talking to one of my streamer friends, and he, like, his first real big shooter that he got into was COD, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, you know, dude, you miss, like, the good ones. That's the <laughs> one that, like, turned the industry to what I hate. <laughs> yeah, exactly, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, and I hear a lot of statements like that, you know, and, and that's kind of the thing, it was like a weird moment where I wasn't trying to shit on the guy having a good time, because he was talking about how much he loved Remake and everything, but uh, I did want to tell him, I was going to say, man, if you played the original, you would really appreciate how much, and for lack of a better term, how much easier a remake is compared to the original Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. I, I think microtransactions is another one of those things. And, you know, not so much like, yeah. I guess like the newer generation never grew up with games that can't be patched. Or, yeah, exactly. You remember <laughs> that shit? Can you imagine if something yeah. just came out as fucked as like, for example, Unity? That was one of the ones that I played. We made a video on that. It's it's privated now, but because uh, I just don't have any of my Let's Play stuff anymore. But um, yeah, that game was just absolutely completely broken. Like John and I played that. We we didn't do the day one patch, which is why a lot of people are getting mad. But my point was, this is what Ubisoft signed off on that they said was good enough to sell for sixty dollars. Yeah, and um, that's why I wanted to play it in that state back in the day when you could not patch. How would this game be? And from everywhere, from getting stuck to the ground, through going through people, to people not rendering, to 
uh, literally appearing wow. on the other, like during combat, just appearing on the other side of the bridge or the map, like just shit like that happening. And uh, I thought to myself, see, this is what would have happened. Like QA teams busted their asses back then. Like QA is just a title now because you can always just fix it later. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Years it's later, just, yeah, to be. yeah, no one really thinks about. Yeah, nowadays, no one really considers the fact that when a game came out all the way up to like the PS2, when that shit got pressed on a disc, you better be damn sure that thing did not just fall apart whenever it went to people's houses because that's there was a, not going to. That's that. a good point because I wasn't even thinking about QA. I was thinking about like just the way the gameplay games are nowadays, like. Like back on the Xbox 360, and that was like there was some microtransactions on the original Xbox. I remember I bought uh, that River Mall level in um, Splinter Cell. Right, right, yeah. Like for multiplayer and such, but and unfortunately, that's what set the benchmark for them to keep doing it because they got a they gave the mouse a cookie and they and the mouse took it, and then from then on, they're just like, wait a second. If we can sell shit after it comes out, or if we can just sell the rest of the game later, fuck it, we are going to come up on top. I hate that so much. But like Halo, that's really what started it. Halo Two had, well, I guess, yeah, Halo Two had um had a whole expansion, like right. uh, where like I had enough DLC down the line where they could sell a disc and you can download it. Like yeah. I don't mind that. Like that, I have no mm-hmm. problem with. That. I guess Halo did it too as well in the original Xbox, but it, it was a lot of content for those forty bucks. Correct. Like, yeah, that's the biggest difference. Exactly. Very, nowadays, like I remember back in the day, like everyone hated Oblivion. Well, not the game itself, but like the fucking horse armor. Yeah, because it was so expensive. Too. It was so it was like yeah, a, and that's like it was like what six bucks for the horse armor. That's fucking cheap nowadays. Yeah. No. Uh, actually, I think it was fifteen dollars. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was something like really high. Hold on. Uh, I know it was armor. high, but I think it was high for that time. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh God. Damn you can probably just type in horse armor; it'll come up. Yeah, I know, right? It's a uh, horse armor price. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. You're very. You're actually right. It was actually two fifty. Never mind. I thought it was way more than that. I guess. I guess when you're a kid without a job, yeah, like a lot. Yeah, so people are like two fifty for horse armor nowadays. That's like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a, skin, a skin is like five to ten dollars or more, like depending on the game you're playing. Yeah, and they got shit on for having a two fifty skin. Yeah. Yep. And that's just what I'm like, the, the mentality has changed. Absolutely. And that's the thing. And that's what I hate the most is the industry has just made it the norm. They have, uh, they have, they've groomed everybody to be like, well, it sucks, but it's just the way it is. And that's why I hate that response a lot. I mean, I know, obviously, as one person, I'm not going to be able to just do something even as a group of 100 people. We're not going to be doing anything just because you'd have to have. Uh, it's like with um, what game did I want to get like completely canceled? Oh, Borderlands Three. Even though that game ended up being not even the shittiest game this year, which if you told me that back earlier this year, I would have lost my mind. But um, that yeah, was- that's the thing. Okay. If, if 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 people just wouldn't buy a game, if I could like just talk everybody into that, like um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three sucked. The Black Order. That game's dog shit. But if I could have just yeah. got everyone to not buy it, then the next time they would probably thought about it a bit more and been like, oh shit, maybe we should make it good. But the thing is, it keeps selling. Same thing with Call of Duty. It keeps selling, even though they report that. Well, it was like one or two Call of Duties ago, and it sold like 200 million units at launch, and they were just like, this is below expectation. I'm like, are you fucking serious? You know how many games wish they could sell 200 million units in like a day? I'm guilty of buying uh, Marvel. I don't know of any controversy or anything about it other than it coming Mm -hmm. out at the time. I bought it day one, um, Mm -hmm. beat it in the first day, and... Was... That was one of the problems that you could just beat it in the first day. Uh, the AI was really stupid. I, I know that was another thing. The AI was just really half assed. The AI is bad. Yeah. To play it. Yeah. Just stuff like that. It was um, not the worst game ever made, but I, it was to the point. It where was, was the sixty like, bucks I, for sure. Exactly. Yep. So, and that's the thing. That's the world we live in now, where we really are just buying a bunch of games for sixty bucks that aren't even worth the sixty. I bucks. actually had something. Someone uh, tell me something funny the other day. So <clears> I was out with a. Uh, someone in my industry and he's actually like a gamer too he's a computer gamer as well mm-hmm. and we were and he was asking my rig and i actually have a so i have a 3080 which it's a pretty penny like it was it's a 600 a 700 graphics card mm-hmm. one of the reasons i don't want to buy a console because i spent, spent so much on this <laughs> like i already spent this yeah <laughs> yeah um and he he was t- telling me about all these games coming out it's like oh, i'll wait a month to get that it'll be like 30 30 bucks i'll wait till... and he was just like it's funny how you you're willing to spend like this much money on your computer, but then when it comes to the games, like you won't spend $60. I'm like, because none of them are fucking worth it. Exactly. <laughs> Graphic card, you'll get something out of that. Um, oh, you know that weird, like, 
graphics card like prices went through the roof is that still a thing um yes and no so like uh if you buy them from a store then mm -hmm. they're normal price but like since there's none of them at stores because there's a shortage okay. of fucking everything <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you know? yeah it's crazy and that's something i wanted to talk about too because like yeah so i've been able to get a few graphics cards uh these ones and i've been selling them to friends because they like one of my friends graphics card he he thought it was crapped out but apparently it didn't so now he just has that one but anyway, <laughs> i wouldn't have helped if he's probably going to listen to this too i wouldn't have helped <laughs> if, uh, if i knew that his graphic card actually worked <laughs> but um the way like these things sell out in minutes like, whenever they go live on best buy on newegg mm -hmm. and recently they've been starting to tweet out hey we're gonna drop these cards at like in an hour but before they weren't so the only way to get them was to watch a stock a stock checker website like there's this guy on twitch who just has a stock checker going and then whenever they get stock an alarm goes off and then you can try to buy it if you're fast enough right like i think they have a similar thing set up for ps5 even yeah the same dude is doing ps5s he's just doing okay. that on youtube okay cool 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 yeah yeah so like a normal person who works not like so i'm fortunate enough that i work from home right now because of what's everything that's going on so mm -hmm. i have my laptop going out i'm working i have my main computer going up on the Twitch channel. So when the Twitch channel goes up, I already have Best Buy up, I already have Newegg up, whatever. I put it in my cart and buy one. Like, But even then, you're not guaranteed. Even if you react when the alarm goes off, there's still so many people trying to buy them. Correct. Yes. Like yep. it's, I've it's, seen that happen. It's fucking that crazy happen. how fast these things go. <clears throat> no normal person can get one. Yeah, right. You have to be really on it. You have to really, really put all this effort into it. You better be invested in that. Yeah, and it's just, it's crazy how like, or go secondhand and pay the literal price. Oh yeah, dude! I saw, I saw PlayStation's going for fifteen hundred. Yep. Or Damn pictures it. of PlayStation <laughs> going well, for five hundred dollars. So those are those are bought. Um, those are uh, I guess bought, like how... generated. No, no, no. So um, that there's bots that like try mm -hmm. to keep the prices up. Oh, okay, okay. I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Yeah. yeah. So people are fighting back by making those paper ones, so the bot will win the paper one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the account will I be remember, canceled. Uh, yeah, I remember eBay issued a warning that if seller accounts are doing that and they get caught, they're gonna fucking get banned. And I started laughing. I was just like selling pictures of the PS5 for like five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. That's just fucking hilarious. Oh man. Um. But yeah. So yeah. That yeah. So I obviously I'm not a. Huge PC gamer. I got into it recreationally between like 2006 and 2010 because I got really into games that were just on PC at the time. Um, now that's not really as much of a thing because that's the thing. That's also what's kind of like you either are a casual gamer or, you know, you're not the biggest graphics guy and you just buy a console and just say fuck it and call yeah. it a day or you build a rig and you just get the most out of gaming. Um, but there are so little exclusives on PC or console anymore that you that's why it's really just up to you what what do you really want to pay or get into i agree with that 100 percent. that's why i like pc gaming um mm -hmm. obviously i threw a little more money than most people would in my rig mm -hmm. but like i could play at higher frame rates higher resolution and right the experience you reap the rewards better. of it exactly but i but I, I can't argue if you only have 500 bucks a console is probably the best way to go at this point yep so yeah but yeah that was interesting to hear about the uh, graphics card thing because i just heard that secondhand because again i'm not the uh, i haven't built a rig in years so uh i just hear about that secondhand well if you need a car let me know i can help you get one <laughs> for sure i believe that yeah no i'll definitely uh uh feel yeah. that out especially if i start trying to build one again or but, even i mean i have a nice case already so i might just gut that and then start over again it was kind of crazy how um the like nvidia people like nvidia fans went after ebay but uh, the scalpers because you know it's the people who do the easy shoes right that are doing this now Oh really? That's this yeah. is the new hotness. Yeah. So like uh, the bot, the the bot people who designed it to get all the Yeezys saw saw that like, hey, we can get like a bunch of gamers will pay a shitload of money. So they started buying all the graphics cards and, and then they reconfigured their bot for consoles because the the graphics cards came out in September. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like this is a new thing that this is probably going to be a norm in our in, in our world now that we've never had to do that's, before. That sucks. You know, it, it, I've been lucky because as, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a sneakerhead and I pay a lot. I, I buy some ridiculously priced shoes sometimes. And um, but I've just never the Yeezys are so fucking ugly. That would be like buying a graphics <laughs> card that makes your graphics shittier. Like, I, I just never understood that. But anyways, but yeah. But yeah, no, to me, I, I, it's kind of interesting when someone sees that a market is you, you can crack into Exploitable. that. Exploitable. Yeah. They're, they're going to fucking go, I guess. 
because obviously these people don't really give a fuck about these sneakers so they don't really give a fuck about these graphics card either but it's money so they're just like hell yeah let's go yeah so that was a, so people were like making bots to auto bid on ebay's like there were some cards like on the first week going for sixty thousand oh, dollars just shit. because you know no one's gonna buy them like they're they're like people would just get into bidding wars with the, no, with no intention of buying to screw over to the scalpers <laughs> right exactly that's fucking great you don't want to accidentally fuck that up though because that would be uh oh and the, great. in ebay's terms of service it says like it's like not league binding or whatever so oh okay so you're just fucking over the scalper you know wasting their that's time right that's good so that's what so yeah like i don't i don't think the consoles have gone that um crazy as the pc game nah. that, but they've been like no. pc Double, people were, maybe yeah well, well well i meant like uh i guess fighting the the scalpers and like oh, making life oh, yeah, inconvenient yeah, yeah. for them yeah no not as much but. yeah i think graphics um the seven dollar card went for like 15 which your whole play oh. which your 500 playstation goes for so they made yeah. less margin with my graph with the graphics card that they, they're doing with consoles yeah and that's the thing and then the, for all the people that are trying to get one of those you're an insane person because they are going to make more of these consoles very soon like yeah. it's not even like it's the end and this is it and they're never going to make a ps5 ever again that's and, how these people are acting like an xbox like uh if i was an xbox well i am a kind of an xbox fan but i can play all the games on pc <laughs> which is not a complaint like some people take it as for some reason that's very for me, that's very smart on Microsoft's part. I think it is too, but some people think that it's dumb because I could just get a PC and play all the games. Yeah. So yeah, now you're yeah, going to you buy fucking Windows and you're still going to buy the game or the Game Pass. like. And to make it look at its potential, you're going to spend a pretty penny on your graphics card. And it's true. It, it, it's and very it. true. The, the, the graphics card in the Xbox Series X is pretty solid yeah. right now. Yeah. There's a ton of casual gamers who are just going to buy a PS5 or an Xbox Series X because they're not going to care that much to be like, oh, I got to have it at 144 FPS. It's just like... But yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting that that's gone there. That kind of sucks though for the uh, PC enthusiasts who are just trying to build a goddamn rig and they have to feed yeah. this loophole. A lot of people sold their old cards right before they came out, you know, because the price would actually drop, and now mm -hmm. they're stuck without cards because they can't get one. Yep, I believe that. Yeah, that sucks. That but what I was that. saying was like for Xbox people, like I wouldn't even buy one right now because of all the issues that they're having with um the fir the recent games, like the first batch of games coming out on it. Mm -hmm. Rumor is that Xbox is a stronger console. Like, there's no argument right. about there. When you compare uh, yeah, hardware, like spec sheet versus spec sheet. Yeah, hardware. Yeah. Is the rumor is that Xbox sent out their dev kits a lot later than PlayStation, though. So uh... they weren't really able to, um, I guess, optimize for it. But damn, that's next. You know, I've been having that issue with fucking my um, my graphics card here. Assassin's Creed kind of fixed it. So I got Assassin's Creed for free as well. By also, buying... very fair price. By when I bought my CPU in July, it came with Assassin's Creed. But like uh, I upgraded, I upgraded my card, like my three, -year, my four-year-old card actually just got upgraded, and then like Assassin's Creed wasn't optimized for the new card, so my performance actually went down. It's fucking crazy. That's fucking awful. So yeah, like new tech in general, you know. You're the, you're the guinea oh, pig. The, yep, <laughs> exactly. It's always the gamble. Early adopter, it, it comes with that risk of, uh, you know, for example, the Xbox 360, even though this lasted for a majority of its lifespan, the Red Ring of Death was especially prominent in the early production models. The Red Ring of I Death mean, is the reason I became a PC gamer. Right, exactly. I ended up going through four Xbox 360s, and at that point, if you think about it, a fucking $500 console doesn't really seem that bad anymore. Yeah, I, um, I think I was on my fourth one as well, actually, because I had, like, yep. two white ones... A black one like the first elites mm -hmm. and then i had the halo 3 one that yeah i had that one also that one's badass yeah i love it i still have it but it's red ringed <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's just a fucking doorstop now but, but like uh it red ringed on me like in august and the one was coming out in november and i was like i'm not gonna buy a new fucking xbox yeah <laughs> and have that shit happen again like three months before the the one so i built a pc and Never, never looks back. Yeah, exactly. And again, because of the fact that Xbox is just saying fuck it, co-release everything, and PlayStation uh, doesn't even have too many exclusives that you know, unless that's your those niche story-driven games are your bread and butter, then there's really no reason to just not go PC. You might as well. If you again, if you have the income to do it, because PC 
gaming can definitely get very expensive. Well, and the and the rumor is actually that PlayStation does want to release uh, more um, titles on a PC. They do. They did it with Horizon Zero Dawn, right? And stuff like that. So yeah, they're 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 dipping their toe in the water. They're just like way late to it because this is just a thing that should have been going on for forever. Yeah, they just want to make it at least a timed exclusive to not <coughs> give you a re like to not like how Xbox is doing the co launching. Right. But to be fair, it's on Xbox's platform. So either way, yeah, they're still making their money anyways because yeah. guess what? You're going to get your Microsoft money one way or the other. Exactly. Uh, the play the rumor about the PlayStation is going to be like three or six months to a year down the line. Which, right. with so many games that I haven't played, I have so many games that I bought that I haven't played yet. Yeah, I, and that's I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, there's so much backlog. It really doesn't matter. That's the other. That's my other argument for not upgrading now. Is that well, there is no backlog for you to like go or new new log to go into with the new consoles. <laughs> exactly. So there's that. But yep, that's the thing too. And then of course you get yeah. You like you said, there are so many games that there are to play now, whether you own them and they're just sitting in your library or otherwise. Like, I mean, when I look at my Steam library and I look at the 829 games that are on there, I'm like, <laughs> bro, I barely fucking scratch that. That's so that's so insane that I have that many games on just PC alone because I know that I've only beaten maybe one percent of that. Yeah, like I, I still want to play Control because like ah, Control's so good. I really hope, I, I really can't wait till you do. Definitely want to talk to you about that. Yeah, uh, like but... apparently that's that game has like some of the best ray tracing in all of. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, want to finish Assassin's Creed? I'm actually am enjoying Assassin's Creed. The, the little bit so... I played. Okay, so that's the thing. With the Assassin's Creed games, even though I'm very down on them, um, the new Assassin's Creed, starting with Origin, are actually very good. So I've, I've only played one. Like... Oh, okay. Like the first one. Right. And I haven't played any of them in between, so I don't... Okay, you know... so that's why you're not burnt out like I am. That's yeah. More... I'm very tired of that series already, just because I've played all of them since the first one. Okay, I would, that would make sense, because they were coming out yearly for a while. Correct, yes. They yeah. Were. And, and then they said they weren't going to, and they've been releasing it yearly ever since. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember that they were just like, "All right, we're going to be doing like maybe a two or three year gap between Assassin's Creed," and then they've been doing one ever since. So. Yeah, they said their quality was going too low or something. Like, well, that's what happens when you shit out games. You're you're going to be yeah. another Activision. Look at Call of Duty. Yeah, I know, especially Call of Duty. That's such an iterative franchise between games it's crazy it's great it, you know it's fair it's it's already unfair to even call it iterative because i don't even feel like they're really changing anything no it's it, 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 it would imply some change so i play you know like i said i, I had black ops the cold mm -hmm. war i played the whole campaign um because i don't really want to play multiplayer or anything because it's not my cup of tea that, yeah, that style that. and you like, don't like playing with children so there's that <laughs> that's true too i don't need someone to tell me that they rape my mom yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly <laughs> But like, so I follow a YouTuber uh, who's a really, he's a really big Halo fan. And now he just <clears> does everything because Halo's not the thing anymore. You're not, yeah, you're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna build up a huge fan base off Halo. So he did a um, COD video. Apparently he's a big COD fan too. I didn't know that. And he was saying oh, all okay. the, he's, he did a whole review of spoilers and everything, but I didn't care because I already beat the game. Right. And a lot of things that he liked, like, I didn't really care for. It's just interesting to me how like. I really just don't think Call of Duty is like my game in general. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think it's not mine either. And that's my thing is like I've played a couple of campaigns and it's always just white dude finds himself in some odd situation and has to figure it out and make moral decisions. I'm just like, OK, for me, it's just like it's too much of an action movie for me. Like uh -huh. there's oh, just okay. too much yeah. shit blowing up. And like, I, I guess I'm so used to shit stories and games that that kind of stuff doesn't phase me anymore. <laughs> But I think that this is just so overblown, like, planes blowing up over here. Oh, shit, we're rolling around. Oh, no. The one thing that could possibly happen to save me fucking happened. Yeah, the <laughs> pistol fell in front of me even though I'm naked and, and uh, surrounded by a thousand enemies. I'm going to kill yeah. yeah. And that's just like, oh, fucking A, like... Uh, no, <laughs> I think I think the thing that fights it is if it had a more comical look and feel that would work, but because it's trying to be this hyper realistic thing, and then yeah, these, exactly, like, one percent scenarios happen. You're like, okay, I can't, I can't, I don't like like uh, what's that Keanu Reeves movie that everyone loves? Uh, uh oh, uh, John Wick. Yeah, I don't like John Wick. It's too fucking unreal for me. 
like the the scene in the mall where they're shoot, not hitting one innocent yeah. person while him and Common are firing the gun back and forth at each other. Like I've seen them because people said they were good, but like I I personally can't stand them. You ha- yeah, you have to like really dumb shit to like and 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 I'm gonna like before everyone just attacks me. What I was gonna say is. I personally liked it, but the shit I like is always super ridiculous. Deadly Premonition, Yakuza. Oh, yeah. All that, all, all that stuff is so over-the-top ridiculous that, like, I like that because of the fact that it's so dumb. It's um, trying to be dumb, though. Exactly. Yeah. So either you like dumb stuff and you're into that, or you don't like dumb stuff, and then I understand why you wouldn't. Because it's not going to change anybody, for sure. Yeah. John Wick not for everybody. So, so, yeah, I guess that's, yeah, Call of Duty is not for me. <laughs> going back to that. Yeah, going back to that Call of Duty. That's how uninteresting Call of Duty was. We just started talking about John Wick instead. <laughs> but uh, VR, though, I, you've been playing a lot of that recently. I'm actually jealous that you got the new uh, Quest. Yeah, so that was all happenstance, really. Um, I was originally talking to a friend at work about it because he was like uh, the only person that I talked to on a daily basis, literally, that uh, was super into VR. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I later found out that you and then a couple other people I know were actually into VR also, except y'all have like, you know, full on, you know, Oculus, uh, rifts and stuff like that. But, well, your quest is uh, better than my rift. Well, that's what I was going to say is I was actually surprised when I go onto like Oculus Reddit and stuff like that, how many people are like, when the games really start rolling out for the quest two, it is kind of just the most practical way to go, especially at the price point. Mm-hmm. I bought the 399 version, but you know. The uh, 64 gig 299 version, apparently, to as your as baby's first VR, that's one of the best ways to go, apparently. And I've been really enjoying it. Um, Robo Recall is just a fantastic game. That game uh, is so good. Yeah, it's really good. Super yeah. hot, of course, the game I've just been uh, watching people play for so long, and I never ended up getting it on PS4 because I just don't feel like console without VR is the way to play it. Um, and then so finally, I got to play Super Hot and. Just the immersion. I, that's the thing I just love so much. Obviously, that's the whole point of VR is immersion, but just right. the way it's done, the the very, very high-resolution lenses that that thing has um, makes it look so awesome. Um, I have to really, really think about it sometimes where I'm just like, uh, like in Super Hot, for example, every time you've killed everyone that you're supposed to kill, the level ends. Well, there's a few times where I had to get used to it where I'm like, killed everyone in front of me, and I'm just like, all right, level, why aren't you ending? Oh, fuck, there's someone behind me, isn't there? And I'll turn <laughs> around and scream or flinch because you got to think about that. There's a whole yeah. world around you. And uh, Robo Recall was great. I love this stupid um, boss that always just says old, outdated memes. That shit was fucking hilarious. Or he's just saying stuff like triggered and like uh, <laughs> cat videos and stuff like that. And I was just like, this is so stupid, but I love it. Um, Robo Recall. Yeah, definitely wait for more. But uh, what's up about Robo Recall? Oh, Robo Recall to me is kind of like um, VR's portal in a sense where it feels very tech demo y, but there mm-hmm. was enough depth into it to kind of make like a, a little game out of it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, some people complained it was too short. I got like four to six hours out of it, which. Especially from what I've heard about very early VR, <laughs> getting four to six yeah. hours out of anything is apparently very good. Because that game came so. out when the touch controllers first came out, like on the original Rift. I got it for free when I bought my original Rift. Oh, that's cool. And, so uh, like that game's pretty old. Like, yeah, and yeah, like, great. As you were saying, is like um, the first VR games were very, in my opinion, disappointing. Like I, I would like mm-hmm. playing them, and then it would be over like right when you thought it was starting. <laughs> right yep, exactly and so now that they're starting to actually become games so i've always like liked looking at vr from afar like you know kind of the kid looking in the shop window yeah but i am actually really glad i waited because apparently not just is this more financially feasible to kind of just do uh especially now that these games are starting to come out i've also been playing like tetris effect and stuff like that um and i'm a big mist fan so that's the one that i'm excited oh, about yeah. it drops in like three days now when it's oculus playing, exclusive correct like, yes correct yeah. So um, I'm very stoked for that, which means that they probably put some time and effort into it. Um, so I'm very excited for that. I will say one thing that does get me and why I enjoy games like um, Super Hot and Robo Recall a bit more, um, the more stationary games, I do get VR sickness very easily. I tried playing Shadow Point. I tried playing the new Star Wars game, but I ended up returning all of them, which I'm really glad that Oculus has such a uh, lenient return policy. Um, I just get really 
queasy real fast, especially when you're moving really fast and I just feel my body sitting there while I'm watching myself go forward. I'm just like, oh God. Yeah. I start to get really sick. I want to try that game Contractors, which seems like just COD for the uh, COD multiplayer for the Quest uh, 2. Uh, I think that game's been on the Rift, but um, it's like a $20 shooter. I might try it out. But with the motion sickness I've been getting from games that are slow paced, I don't even want to see what it's like when I'm running around, looking around corners and trying to keep track of all this shit. So I don't know. I might get really sick when I play that game, but we'll see. I remember a few years back, um, they had Wildlands. I don't know if you're familiar with that game. Wildlands 2. It's on the it's on the Rift. Okay, I'll probably look into that. I think it's an Oculus game. Oh, okay. And like cool. you, you swing around and stuff like that. And I we were playing it at PAX. And this is like when I already had I already had VR, so you know I was used to that stuff. Even having VR in that game where you're like swinging through vine on vines and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and like when when you let go and you go go off flying and then eventually right. in the end, I would uh-huh. like start falling over thinking. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you really have to be uh, you. Yeah, you really do have to be careful with when you're playing VR because that would happen to me a few times when I was almost tripping over or like whatever, and not even like environmental hazards obviously that's why you set your boundaries yeah. and stuff like that they don't run into the fucking tv and shit but um that's one of the things where i would just really had to be careful because when i would uh move in robo recall for example and i'd be on the roof edge i would get really freaked out and like start trying to balance myself and <laughs> try not to fall and shit even though obviously i'm not going to fall off the building i'm just right. like standing there and uh, just stuff like that it was it's so disorienting sometimes and like sometimes in a good way where the immersion's so good so so good that um i'm very stoked to see and i hope that they do release a lot because apparently during the quest one's lifespan they really didn't release that much apparently yeah it has it's been pretty dead honestly like so. as someone who really loves vr um mm-hmm. i've actually been very disappointed with uh, the releases and i was actually looking forward to the playstation 5 because sony sounds like they're going to be um really invested in vr and that might yeah, be why the get a PSVR PSVR. wasn't awful um but now it's just uh, I, I thought about going that so before i got into oculus quest I, I thought about going the psvr route because i already have a playstation and stuff like that yeah but a apparently it's just much better if you have a pro because of all that expendable ram but then b especially when people were comparing it to the oculus quest 2 they said you're gonna feel so outdated and old playing psvr because it just hasn't aged right. very well so they said just get the two there's gonna probably be a lot more support for it side quest is always a thing that you can just side load some indie games and stuff like that and um yeah. I've been enjoying it. Uh, where I've gotten a lot of joy out of it, really, and although I don't advise doing this during a fucking global pandemic, but um, seeing someone else try out VR for the first time. It may, the Quest 2 makes it so easy to just drag around and show people. That's kind of uh, why I wanted to talk like, to you. Yeah, because it's so much fun just hearing people's experiences with it, because it really is something different. And I think it is at this point where I'm actually impressed with it now. I think if I tried VR six, seven years ago, I probably wouldn't have been as blown away. Yeah, I think I've had my VR headset... or. I've been in VR because I've, I've actually sold my original Rift and then mm-hmm. picked up the Rift S. And I was actually thinking about selling this, the Rift S, to get a Quest 2. Since you can just link Oculus Link anyway. Exactly. Cool. Like, I would get the $300 one. The Link itself is like 100 bucks, so I'd end up paying $400. Yeah. These are on eBay are going for like 250 so it'll only be like 150 out of my pocket. You know, that's not yep. bad. Boom, there you go. Yeah, exactly. But it's so, so I've been doing I've been playing VR for a while, but it's just cool like how when I listen to your podcast and you're talking about mm-hmm. it, it, it kind of feels like I you know, through you I'm reliving the first time that I Yeah. Played. You're yep. even talking about Robo Recall, which was my first game because I you yeah. know, I got it with the Rift. So mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And the fact that a game like Robo Recall used to require the whole rig and headset, and now it's just a fucking standalone headset game. Yeah, it's crazy how long it's or how far it's come. Yeah, absolutely. So, and affordable, uh, like you said. Two ninety nine, exactly. Uh, it's it's a cheaper option right now than get. I mean, while you're waiting for the PS Five and Series X to get some fucking game, <laughs> you can get why that. Don't you try it, why don't you just try it out? And it isn't for everyone. I've heard people say that they tried it. And they were really disappointed with the library because it didn't just have a bunch of COD blops and Fortnite and shit like that. And I'm just like, well, you probably should have done a little more research than none, not at all. Because, you know, I, I kind of came into it knowing that the VR has its own ecosystem, that not everything's just going to be transcribed into VR. I also think non-VR players don't know what they want because they don't know how VR works. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, I remember back in the day when VR, before VR was mainstream, or not, it's not mainstream now, but before VR was accessible. Right, right. That's 
um, you know, I was like, oh, I can't wait for Halo to be in VR. Like, I don't know if I want to play Halo in VR. <laughs> yeah, see, and that's the thing. That's why I'm not sure if I want to play Contractors because it's basically just Call of Duty in VR. And I'm just kind of thinking about it. I'm like, I, again, with Super Hot and uh, Robo Recall, that's more what I want. I wish there was more of that um, because I just really enjoy that. But yeah. I mean, that it because because Robo Recall um, just scratched that like rail shooter itch, um, even though it's not like an exactly a rail shooter, but kind of is because you just go to each part and then kill everything in that section. But um, I would call I really it more wave defense it. personally. But there you go. Yeah, that's what it was. But yeah, I, I just enjoy games like that. I would love for them to do a Robo Recall too. Although Epic Games is just too busy, you know, selling out to China. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I would like to see a Robo Recall too or get more stuff like that. It's good stuff. Uh, I definitely am excited to see where it goes from here, especially with the uh, estimated support that the Quest Two is supposed to get versus the Quest One. I think this was the right time to get into it. Well, I hope so because anything that goes on the Quest goes on my Rift. So. <laughs> There you go, exactly. Or, so like, big go. games. Yeah, because I know they announced Medal of Honor. Like, Oculus, I don't know where they went or why they stopped doing anything, but it seems like when the Rift came out, they did some games, then they went, they disappeared for years. And now that the Quest <laughs> 2 came out, they're announcing all these Oculus-exclusive games, which right, it's, right. it's cool. Like, I'm glad I have an Oculus. I kind of wish they weren't exclusive. Right. Because I do feel like there's better headsets, but... The reason I have the Rift is so I can have access to Steam and the Oculus Store. Right, yeah. And I noticed that, too, when you talk about this, the splitting of the libraries. I noticed that, too, because I wanted to see, especially when I get my thing that can actually run VR uh, through Questlink, um, I was thinking about getting stuff like Doom and everything, but then I saw it was only on the Vive and the uh, Index, and I said, oh. Yeah, that well, that sucks. Like, and, well, I guess not. And, I, and VR doesn't have a big enough install base to do that kind of shit. Right, right. It doesn't. At this point, everyone should be getting what they can get. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, apparently, yeah, the Medal of Honor game is supposed to be on the Quest 2 also, and I'm very curious to see how that's going to run, because it looks like a very expansive experience and graphical thing. But from what I've seen, apparently this is the headset that... Because the, the bump between the Quest 1 and the Quest 2 is apparently just a huge deal. So. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty big. Um I also like the Warhammer series, and that that uh, Battle Sister is coming out. The first Warhammer game for Oculus is coming out. Uh, Battle uh, Warhammer forty thousand K or forty K. What the fuck am I saying? Forty thousand K. I'm stupid. Like, so uh, are you going to control the robots, or are you going to? Is it like an RTS? You're going to play one of the uh, the Space Marine people. You're this girl, the Battle Sister. That's pretty cool. Yep, you're gonna I kind of want to try that out then. Get, yeah, you're gonna get to play. You're gonna have your chainsaw and your gun and everything. And that's legit. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be first person. Yeah, so I, cool. I feel like all the good games are starting to come out now that the Quest Two. Yeah, came now out. And yeah. It's so weird. And like you said, it, they the Oculus just fucked off for years. From what I'm seeing, just retroactively looking at yeah. it. Yeah. I'm looking at all these updates, and it just jumps from like 20 like 16, nothing. And then now all these announcements are happening. Yeah, because I remember, like, when I forgot what we were, I think when we were playing Marvel, like, I don't know if you saw the Marvel game on there. They're taking it off the store. I guess it didn't sell it well enough. Mm -hmm. I got an email the other day saying I won't be able to play it past, like, June something, or January something. That's the other curse of digital gaming. Fuck off. They could just yeah. That's, that's, that's fucking lame. Yeah. But I, what I was going to say, like, when I booted up Marvel, like, for the first time, I remember this, like, all my other games in Oculus, it's, like, last played a year ago. Like, yeah, they didn't yeah. do anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's that's so crazy to hear, uh, especially because I, you know, wasn't around at, in the scene at that time, and I'm just right. getting into it. And uh, now that I'm just hearing all these announcements, just, like, I have I follow Oculus on YouTube just so that way I can see the trailers as they come out. And I need to do like, that. I follow them on yeah. Twitter, but it gets lost in fighting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in, in, in the racism and the fighting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's the thing I do, and it's always just so cool whenever a thing comes out, you know, uh, they're they're just throwing money at Beat Saber now. Apparently, Beat Saber was like not getting any new songs, and then now all of a sudden, Beat Saber has the literal biggest K-pop act in the world. I saw you playing that. Now. Yeah, yeah, and it's just one of those things. There's just like all this shit is now coming out. Mistport, Warhammer game, and it, to me, it, it to me it looks like a regular release schedule. But apparently, this is so unregular for Oculus for so long to just see these games coming out. It's just a, it's a good thing, but it's like where the hell were you? You know, years ago. I kind of wish Oculus would have released a little bit more, I guess, tiered VRs than they are right now. Mm -hmm. But that's just my personal gripe. Mm -hmm. I, the, the Quest is actually, it was pretty good hardware for the price, but 
Absolutely. I kind of wish they would have something more, not so much vibe level because I don't want to spend a thousand dollars, but maybe like right, right, yeah. <laughs> maybe like an intermediate. Yeah, that's the thing. It's either you you go entry level or you go fucking ham. Yeah. And there's no there's no in between. <laughs> there's, no, there's no enthusiast level. It's just like you're insane or you're you're just checking it out. But uh, I guess this is one of the things where you're saying how like so when we were talking about before PlayStation versus Xbox, you know, software mm -hmm. versus hardware, and. I, I'm buying the lower end software. I mean, hardware because I want the software. Right, right, exactly. So that's where it kind of goes from there. But um, I'm definitely curious to see where it goes. Um, I know one of my biggest concerns when I first bought the headset, and now who's to say that this won't happen? Because obviously Oculus doesn't have the best reputation for keeping it up when it comes to uh, releases. But I was always scared that it's just going to become that that uh, expensive thing, and that's just you know someone's going to come over and be like, "What the hell is that over there in the corner, just sitting there covered in dust?" And I'll be like, "Oh, that's my Oculus headset." Yeah, <laughs> I haven't played it in two years. It's just like I hope it doesn't become that because I am enjoying it so far. But um, like uh, like you said, you have to kind of know what you want, especially in terms of VR, because I'm just starting to craft that list of what do i like i'm even taking games off my list now because i'm like yeah based on my experience with this game i'm probably not going to like this game so i'm just going to remove that now I'm more into puzzle games or i'm more into you know uh stationary shooters all this stuff is running around running gun shit i don't like that because it makes me sick so i just remove it yeah and there's a lot of people who can't like how you're t going back to your motion sickness mm -hmm. uh have you heard it yeah, i'm pretty sure you've heard of it plasmophobia Right, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, uh, so I just played it non VR, but yeah. Right, so we had a the the first stream that Matt and I did. We had some friends on with us, and we did four player co op. Uh, well, obviously co op. It's only co op, but um, <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> but um, all of us were playing VR, mm -hmm. and then like three games into it, you know, they I, they take off their VR headset. They're like, I can't do it anymore. I'll play with you guys on on like just regular, but. You know, I can't do the VR anymore. I get too dizzy or whatever. So, you know, that kind of limit. I guess that kind of limits the people that really get into it too. Because I can play VR all day, and I don't. Yeah, get yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but very, some it's people can't. Different. Yeah, some people cannot. That's true. Um, which definitely adds another division in terms of um, what you can get into with that. Because yeah, and who will well, buy it? Honestly, and, some and, people and might not want to buy it if they're only going to play it for a few hours a day or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Um, one cool thing, and this is going to be a very niche thing is uh, I've been using it a lot for YouTube. And I know that's going to sound lame as fuck because it's just like, oh, YouTube, what the fuck? But um, in the K-pop scene, there's a lot of VR videos. So it's just crazy seeing these immersive uh, VR performances and stuff like that where it looks like the performer is just like right there in front of you. And that shit gets uh, a little weird sometimes. Because like, when they get close, I feel myself moving back so they're not like fucking <laughs> ramming into my face. And I'm just like, okay, well, I don't want to get hit, obviously. But um yeah, just stuff like that. I just think it's cool how there is obviously an acknowledgement to VR. I just can't wait to. I hope it just gets like bigger. The well, that doesn't sound that crazy to me because when I uh, first got my uh, S, that's when the the Go and the Quest came out. Mm -hmm. So the NBA actually has uh, games in VR. Oh, but that's it's, cool. it's not all of them. It's only like certain ones. And they have, a, they have a schedule of which ones are going to be in VR. And whenever it's a team I want to see, like either the Rockets or the Spurs, I've always wanted to watch it in VR. Yeah, that's cool. But the problem was that only the Quest and the Go supported it. They didn't support oh, it on the what? Rift, oh, so I couldn't sucks. do it. But yeah, like I, I would have totally been down. Like what you're saying, you love K-pop, so yeah, like watching the... So it's not weird to me because I like basketball, so... Right, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't, it's going to be funny when they're wearing like cameras on their shoulders to film this stuff. And you're, <laughs> You choose which player you are. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to be fucking doing that. That's going to be funny. I don't think I'll ever do that, obviously. But uh, that would be so funny, though. It's like, oh, shit, Kobe. Uh, well, oh, not Kobe. That was the worst. <laughs> that was the worst player to choose. Uh, the LeBron cam. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Kobe cam is going to work anymore here in 2020. But um, whoops. Yeah, I could have said any player in the world. And I'm like, <laughs> it's Kobe. Like the guy who just died a few months ago. Such an asset. But yeah, that one, LeBron. <laughs> LeBron cam. <laughs> um, but yeah, so but that's cool though. I do like the fact that they try to do stuff like that. I wish there was more stuff. Like I saw this cool VR documentary about Chernobyl, and you just like yeah, you know, on, on the Quest Store, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, that's really weird to see the more expensive headset get omitted from features. That's so freaking weird. 
Yeah, I, 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 less, they're obviously not as expensive. I think at the time they were already wanting to abandon the Rift idea. That's so fucky. And they just came out with one. That's the risk of being an early adopter, I guess. Though, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. The risk of early adopting. Because the 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 Rift S is really kind of like a hybrid um, original Rift and the newer heads standalone headsets. Mm -hmm. Because it maybe the technology just wasn't there to be like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. Because it has the see-through cams, like the way yours does. Yeah. And the original Rift didn't have that. And, it, you know, so it has all the sensors on board. Yeah. But it still had the ability to hook up. Well, I guess the Quest did, too. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it was just that weird middle iteration that was just in between technology. They were already probably developing the Quest. But then they just released this S in between, and it was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's uh, unfortunate, but, you know, I can make it. I can make do. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, no, I'm enjoying VR though. Good stuff, good stuff. Let me know um, when you get your uh, PC up and I can tell you which games on Steam are really good. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. There's tons yeah. on Steam. Like, for that gap that I was talking about in Oculus, yeah, tons of games came on Steam that were... That's awesome. Good, That's really like, I mean, I wouldn't have bought them at launch, but now that you can get them on a Steam sale for like $10. Well, the first thing we're going to play once I do that is Phasmophobia, so we'll, we'll do that. Oh, hell yeah. Phasmophobia, uh, Killing Floor. Killing Floor, definitely. So we'll, we'll get some good stuff there. But yeah, yeah no, but, um, I'm really excited, though. And it, I'll get that going. I mean, I'll probably get another PC before PS5 anyway, so there's that. Cool. Yep. Well, I I think you have to get ready for your stuff soon, so I, it's a good stopping point. Yep, that'll be it. But that was fun, though. I was happy to be on here. Good stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, thanks I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to leave this podcast to record another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be podcast day. But no, no, it's been a lot of fun, man. I wouldn't mind uh, wouldn't mind coming back at all. And then we can always shoot the shit whenever we build up some topics that you know we feel I should talk about. Like if Halo comes out and it's complete dog shit or it ends up being good, we can have a <sighs> nice discussion about that. <laughs> and we'll see. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I really do. I do. I think people think uh, people take uh, our realism as cynicism. And it's kind of maybe it kind of is cynical. But... I mean, look at the industry. They've not given us much uh, material to be happy about. You know, people, some people tell me, I can't watch your shit. You're always so negative. I'm like, that's the industry, buddy. Just because I'm not fucking joy boy, love all every game that fucking comes out. You know, I'm sorry. It's not for you then. I'm just calling things out. Yeah. You know, obviously, when I enjoy something like Yakuza, I'll fucking praise that shit to the moon because I love it. I think tri I shit on triple A's a lot, but I guess yeah. in, in our original podcast, my original podcast, we kind of sprinkled. I do bring in topics that I like, like I talk PC parts sometimes, so that, right. that's like, you know, gets me happy. But yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you gotta have your thing that makes you happy too, that's the thing. If you dig through the dog shit, something will make you happy. There's gold inside the turd. As I said though, for like, I like the presentation on Halo, because it looked like old Halo, but I yeah. have no reason to believe that they're actually gonna do something good. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, yep, so. Hopefully your uh, your hype isn't misplaced and it actually ends up being good. But it's uh, a Game Pass game. I lose five bucks for the hey, month. <laughs> boom! There you go. Ain't too bad. All right, man. Well, I appreciate that, dude. It was be it was good being on. And uh, again, I'd love to be on again some uh, sometime. Yeah, we have to do it again. Appreciate it for sure, man. Of course. All right. Thanks. All right, later.